This is my setup that I've came up with for cutting small parts on the table saw very accurately. Uh, it's got uh, the jig itself, the sled, uh, uses a toggle clamp to hold the workpiece in place. It's got sandpaper underneath to uh, provide friction to keep it from moving around once it's clamped down. And it, this edge is adjustable with these two screws. These have got uh, two pieces that ride up against the fence that slide along. And these can be adjusted in and out to make real fine adjustments to the angle relative to the blade. And the part is lined up underneath this reticle. This is just a piece of glass. It's a uh, glass for a cheap picture frame. It's got a, a fine line engraved into the underside and, and uh, inked in where you can see it with black ink. But you, uh, you line up the lines on the pattern with this reticle just for a, a coarse adjustment. And you clamp it down and then you don't cut it yet. This is a microscope. It's got a crosshair that you can uh, adjust it to where it's lined up with the, the edge of the cut. And I'll go ahead and do that. I'll cut off some of this excess around this pentagon. And then I'll, I'll set that up. Cut that again, make sure I didn't. I meant to align that camera before I unclamp the part. I'll do it again. That's close enough where I can just tap it over. Put that crosshair right on it, the very edge of the cut. And as I slide it back and forth, this stays online. It's just a single point. And I've also got various levels of magnification. I don't use it at the highest because it's a little bit blurry. A couple of notches down below. So then I'll take the piece that I'm cutting, line up the pattern line with the reticle, they'll move it forward to put that line underneath the microscope, then I can make fine adjustments to uh, get it exactly parallel and online. Hard to see the crosshairs with the white background. That's real close. And that the crosshairs stay on that line from one end to the other.
We need to fine tune it just a little bit, but it's close enough for this demonstration. So, the magnification of this microscope is somewhere around 40 or 50 power, I think, in it with this setting. For a comparison, there's a piece of hair. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. This piece of hair is only like two thousandths of an inch wide. And that piece of line right there, it's real close, a tiny bit wider, maybe three thousandths. So you can see that the adjustments that I make are really fine, you know, compared to you know a piece of hair. So it really increases the level of precision that you can use in cutting these parts. So, cutting parts with that, um, you can make things like this with a higher level of precision than what you could before without it. Being able to make the adjustments under magnification helps a lot. This lid fits in all three positions. That was the first object I made with it. You can also set this up where uh, you can cut bevels. I got more information about this on the website. Details of making the jig and the reticle. The built-in screen, I like that because it's all built-in and it's, it's good enough for, you know, for what I'm doing here. So, thanks for having a look. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And... Hit that bell to get notifications when I post new videos. I'll have some new videos coming out in the near future. Thank you for your time. I use these two edges right here to uh, check the bevel angles. This angle here is the same as uh, a dihedral angle between two faces on the dodecahedron. So if we just put the two test cuts on this gauge that I made, that matches it pretty well. If there was a gap on the outside, you would need to increase the angle. If it was on the inside of the corner, you would need to decrease it. But I think that right there fits pretty good. So then we'll start cutting our parts.
that's a straighter line to show. Almost there. Yep. I'm gonna have to redo this. Run out of adjustment. finished piece. So I've already got this made. I just want a better video of a part being cut. And that's a very nice fit. Very nice. Okay. So I glued this up all at once. Uh, had pieces connected with uh, tape and just unfolded flat. Put a little bit of glue on the, the joints to be glued together and I left three pieces you know separate from the rest for like a lid and I put uh, clear tape over the joint surface on those to prevent it from sticking if there was any squeeze out to get into those joints so after I put the glue on I folded it up and wrapped it in a stretch wrap and then I got this really heavy rubber band I found somewhere out know where I got it. I've had it in my toolbox for a long time so that works as a good clamp so I'm gonna unwrap it and see what it looks like. The stretch wrap. If I can find it in. <laughs> they glue together really tight 
While I was doing the glue, I thought I put like a pencil mark on the edges that I didn't want glue on just so I didn't get confused while applying the glue. And there was a little bit of squeeze out, so if I hadn't done this clear tape on the edge of all the around the lid, I would have uh, glued it on. And really difficult to get it apart. But that's been glued together for a few hours now, and uh, it's set. It's uh, I used Pat Bond one.